Stock market crash 2022. It is getting more and more difficult to say the least. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ today, for instance, is down an additional 2.35%. Five day returns now of negative 4.6%. One month returns alone of negative 13.38%. Six month returns now down 27. Year to date, down 28, almost 29% year to date alone. That's the reality of the marketplace we're in. That's really the stress we're facing within the marketplace more broadly. Now, people often come and ask me, listen, what are high class companies I can buy during this difficult time? Opportunistic investors. Investors thinking, listen, I'm not going to buy into the fear. I'm not going to buy into the doubt. Instead, I'm going to use this opportunity to buy more stocks, increase my allocation, build my wealth, build my portfolio, so that when eventually we get that uptick, I'm better positioned than anyone else. And when I think about stocks like that, when I think about high class equities that have been brought down by the marketplace, there is one name that comes to mind. And that name is Adobe. Adobe Inc. For those of you who aren't familiar with Adobe, I'm sure many of you are, but creative products, products for creators, video editing, creative artists, this are the product, these are the products they use. The creative cloud subscription, fundamental to almost every single creative field in the modern artistic world. This is a crucial company of the future as people continue to transition to self-contracting, to more creative work rather than the typical nine to five, and also with enterprises more and more employing these creative technologies, Adobe is a long-term play. Adobe is a long-term buy and hold. And at the current trading price, after the substantial declines this equity has been feeling, one month returns of negative 4%, six month returns down 40% in value year to date alone, down 29.14%. This is the type of equity to get in on. This type of opportunity that doesn't come along every so often. This type of opportunity that only comes along every 5, 10, sometimes in the space of 15 years. The quality of this company, what I'm about to show you in terms of its underlying fundamentals, virtually unmatched. Let me show you. When it comes to underlying quality, the underlying fundamental financial strength of Adobe, it is, to say the least, unwavering. A cash to debt ratio of 1.01. If they so desired, instantaneously, all of Adobe's de debt gone, drop of a hat. That the stability they have despite the recessionary presses despite this doubtful marketplace in which so many companies are residing if adobe so desired all the debt could be gone instantaneously massive amount of cash on hand in excess of five billion and here's the thing when you look at cash on hand you see that cash debt ratio of 1.01 you think yeah they could pay down their debt that's a, a fair degree of financial stability but there's more to it a company as opportunistic as adobe a company as well managed as adobe you know what they're doing do you know what they're doing in this stressful market period where prices of equities are declining whilst they're holding cash on hand? They're looking for acquisitions. Bloomberg Peace came out yesterday saying the CEO of Adobe is saying, listen, we're always in the market for acquisitions. We're always looking for new companies to buy up opportunistically. And in this type of marketplace where we are seeing declines day over day, more and more, planes, more, and more pain, not only within the NASDAQ, but also in specific equities. This is time to be that type of player. This is time to be opportunistic, be buying up companies going forward. This is what I've been saying about Adobe for months on end. And almost, the, I won't say every Adobe video, but the vast majority of Adobe videos I've made, I've mentioned, listen, that cash on hand gives them acquisition opportunity. They can buy up companies opportunistically, become more free cash flow creative, build up their business so that when eventually market sentiment changes, when eventually things get more positive, they stand to benefit the most. They stand to rebound the heart is coming out of that recession. That degree of financial stability, that degree of financial certainty associated with this company, it is reflected in the Altman score. An Altman score of 12.18, indicating an immense degree of underlying safety, stability, certainty with this business. So, evidently, financial strength is there. Financial strength is absolutely exceptional for Adobe, not only in relation to the numerical figures you're looking at there, but also the underlying nature of its business, the underlying free cash flow accretive nature of its business, and the way in which capital is allocated within it. And when it comes to capital allocation, the numbers I'm about to show you in relation to profitability and returns on equity, I think it's fair to say they are world class. Let's start with returns on equity. Returns on equity of 34.29%. In this stressful marketplace, there is one thing more important than anything else, and it is managerial competency. The managerial competency, the vision, execution with which capital is allocated within businesses more broadly. When it comes to that, Adobe has it. Quite simply, returns on equity of 34.29% are world class. If I was looking at a company, 
a company around Adobe size, around 188 billion, and they were achieving returns on equity of 15%, I'd be happy with that. Returns on equity of 15% are absolutely fine. And yet, Adobe's more than doubling that. Returns on equity of 34.29% indicate not only the tremendous degree of underlying quality in their business, but also that degree of managerial acumen. The people allocating capital within this business, the people running the company, clearly know what they're doing. So, returns on equity are there. Managerial competency. But the key thing in this marketplace, the key thing in this inflation later marketplace, where we have inflation at a 40 year high barreling forward, and I believe around 8.3% year over year, what's more important than anything is pricing power. The ability of your company, your individual businesses, to raise their prices over time, exuding a great degree of net margin profitability. And that's exactly what Adobe has. Net margins of 29.9%, simply exceptional on both an industry and historical basis. Operating margins of 36.72%, historically, industry basis. Again, phenomenal gross margins of 88.04%. Once again, on both an industry and historical basis, almost the very, very best this company's achieved. It's undeniable. This is a high class equity across the board. Every metric, profitability, financial strength, the actual people running the company. It's undeniable that this is a high quality business. But does that mean it's fairly valued? Does that mean there's a buying opportunity present? Yes, the stock is down a lot. The stock has declined 42.12%. So naturally people start to ask the question, you know, is there a buying opportunity present? With the declines in the marketplace, is there now a chance to initiate a position in Adobe? Well, let's investigate. Let's find out. Let's break this company down. Let's discover if there is a buying opportunity present. When it comes to the PE ratio, the price to earnings and the forward PE for this company, forward price to ratio, forward price to earnings ratio, they're both still pretty high. A current PE ratio of 39.55, forward PE of 28.97. Both these numbers, very, very high relative to Actually, relative to the growth that's taking place, not unreasonable. Relative to the market more, reason more, more broadly, they're still high. But when you take into account the growth that's taking place within the organization, a three-year EBITDA growth rate of 28.4%, three-year earnings per share growth rate of 24.4% consistently, relative to those PEs, that may actually indicate a degree of undervaluation within the stock. Oftentimes, people seem to think that P-E ratios are the be-all, end of investing, that the P-E ratio tells you if the company is over or undervalued. That's not the case. All the P-E ratio tells you is, if, is how much growth predication is priced in the stock going forward. How much does the market believe? How much do individual investors believe that this company can grow going forward? All the high P-E indicates is that degree of growth predication priced in, not an actual reflection of the tangible value of this company. So let's break it down. Let's have a look at the real growth rates that have been perpetuating this company. Let's look at the reality of growth taking place in Adobe. And when we look at the numbers, when we break down the growth rates over the past decade, five years, it becomes very apparent very quickly that this is still a very, very appealing investment prospect. Let me show you. On a five year, on a 10 year basis, 10 year growth on an earnings per share basis of 30.4%. Five year growth of 36.7% and yes, we have had an earnings decline over the past 12 months, an earnings decline of negative 12.4%. But think about the secular trends still around this business. Think about the potential for growth going forward. And also think about the pretty tough compare relative to the pandemic. During the pandemic, Adobe's products absolutely blew up. Everyone using Creative Cloud within their schoolwork, within their homework, within their professional enterprise tasks. Naturally, you're going to have tough compares. But going forward, all you need to price in today the only growth you need to price in on Adobe today to get a fair value for your money is a growth rate of 20.58%. That's all. If Adobe grows at 20.58% going forward over the next decade, you're getting fair value. That growth rate, bear in mind, is significantly lower than the 10-year growth rate, significantly lower even more so than the five-year growth rate for the firm. So, despite the secular trends around this business, despite the tailwinds pushing it forward positively so, the company still only needs to be priced in with 20% growth to get a fair value going forward. Do you think Adobe can grow faster than 20.58% going forward over the next decade? I think so. I think given everything I've seen, the degree of managerial competency, the quality of the underlying business, that is absolutely a tangible and very realistic prospect. So if we price in more reasonable growth, growth of say 25% going forward over the next decade, look at that. A price target of $539.60 relative to 
A current trading price of only three ninety-eight, a twenty-six point one seven percent margin of safety. That, to say the least, that's a good deal. In this marketplace laden by fear, you now have the ability to buy exceptionally high quality companies, companies like Adobe, at what are evidently fair values relative to the growth they're going to perpetuate going forward. That's the reality of this marketplace. Those are the opportunities present within this marketplace. So of course, conduct your own research before you make any moves in the stock market. But if you enjoyed this video, if you have to learn something more about my current thoughts on Adobe relative to the market more broadly, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or topic you'd like me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. would love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.